Like we keep saying, this is not Russia's war. This is Putin versus the West. America is heavily invested. Europe is deeply involved. But the rest of the world is not interested. Let's focus on Asia. Many experts have called this the Asian century. Politics, economy, diplomacy, everything is pivoting to Asia. And the numbers support this pivot. Asia makes up 60% of the world population. It contributes 38% of the global GDP. So Asia sentiment matters. And right now, that sentiment is clear. This is not our war. We saw this sentiment at the UN General Assembly on Tuesday. Most European nations took sides. Asian countries did not. Let's show you that list of abstentions again. Iran, Iraq, Kazakhstan, India, Pakistan, China, Bangladesh, Kyrgyzstan, Sri Lanka, Tajikistan and Vietnam. Two others did not vote at all. Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. And two yes votes did not represent their current regimes. Afghanistan and Myanmar. So what does the list tell you? That Asia is not interested in World War III. All this talk of Cold War 2.0, all this talk of picking sides, the fact is Asia has other business in mind. And this attitude cuts across bilateral ties. Take Central Asia, for instance, the five stands. All of them have closed ties with Russia, but not one of them voted in favor of Russia, not even Kazakhstan. Do you remember what happened there in January? There were massive anti-government protests in Kazakhstan. Putin deployed Russian soldiers to restore order, yet they voted against him. Same with American partners. India has consistently refused to pick sides in this war. So has ASEAN member Vietnam. The only Asian countries that backed this resolution were the ones that did not really have an option. Countries like Saudi Arabia, Israel, the UAE, Japan and the ASEAN states. These countries need US military and economic help, so obviously they had to show support. But that support only extends to the United Nations outside the UN. It's every country for itself. Washington wants Saudi Arabia to stabilize oil prices. They want OPEC to increase production, but so far Riyadh has refused. Israel did not co-sponsor a resolution against Russia at the United Nations Security Council. That resolution would have been binding. So Israel did not co-sponsor it. This time, at the UN General Assembly, they did. What about the UAE? A similar strategy. They abstained in the United Nations Security Council but voted in favor at the UNGA. Then you have Japan and ASEAN. Both groups need US military support. Both groups face joint aggression by Russia and China. So naturally, they voted in favor. Japan may be an exception, but ASEAN is not. Their foreign ministers released a joint statement today. It says the ministers are deeply troubled. It also calls for a ceasefire, but guess what it does not say? Russia. The word Russia is not even mentioned in their joint statement. And that sums up ASEAN's policy. Do not interfere anywhere. Just mind your own business. In fact, that seems to be the strategy all over Asia. What explains this strategy? For starters, this is not their war. Conflicts in Asia get rarely get such international response. The UNSC does not meet every day. The UNGA is not convened for an emergency session. Secondly, this is a crisis of the West's making. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the war. That's definitely on Putin. I'm talking about the political issue at the heart of it. Whether it's NATO expansionism, whether it's nuclear deterrence, whether it's balance of power, all of it was created by the West. And now the West wants to drag the whole world in. They want Asian nations to pick sides. You can argue that this is not about politics, this is about principles. But the fact is, geopolitics is based on self-interest. Sometimes there is no room for principles there. Right now, Asia's interest is in non-alignment. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.